Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living and retirement worth having. When we do this, we start out in childhood and we start dreaming about what our life will be like. I can remember being three or four, living in a community where we would go to church a town away. Our town of Wheaton was farther away than where we went to church. I'm not exactly sure why my parents did that, but I think it was because there really wasn't the appropriate Methodist church in our community for our children and our family. I remember I had a three-piece little man's blue suit. I loved that thing. Every time I wore it, I got a lot of attention from the girls, and I really liked that. But at the same time, I felt like a man like my father. He would lend me a handkerchief, and I'd put it in my pocket just like him. If he didn't lend me one, he knew he'd end up giving me his because I'd blow my nose in it anyway and be like, just keep it. And that was my dad. But in life, we have moments of time to talk about our fathers. My father put me in T-ball. I was one of the better players, not at all, but I became a good player. And over the course of time of learning how to play ball, I understood what that meant to people. You see, when you play ball, you're learning how to be a team member. When you play ball, you're also learning how to be a bit of a leader with your own skill sets. And when I was really good, it was almost all the way up till high school until a girl monkeyed my head. But at that point in time, I sort of lost my good quality throwing ability. And I didn't do it intentionally. I think I picked it up by watching people who did not throw correctly. And it wasn't intentional. It just happened because when you're hanging with people, you become more like those people. And if you're hanging with the wrong people, you have a problem. My own son, my own Japanese son, was sort of like that. He came here through challenges and language barriers, and his teachers, for the most part, were pretty good with him. They didn't challenge him enough is not true. They didn't piss all over him for his language barrier. He learned the language a little bit later in terms of really truly good quality speaking language than most students, of course, who were born here. But the problem he had the most wasn't actually in his regular classes, it was in his ESL class with a woman who felt that she had been an ESL teacher for 30 years and she just knew what everybody needed. But here's what we learned through the process of conversation. She rarely had Japanese kids. What that meant is that the cultures that she was crossing to teach them language and their family environments was totally different than the humiliation that a Japanese person can feel with the slightest quip. And this is what I understood about my son. He made alliances with good kids that were a part of his music group, his choir group, his dancing group that he did, and he was pretty great at it. I was really proud of him when he did that show on the stage for, with his friends and with his classmates, and we went to that. But what was also really hard to grasp was whether or not the kids really liked him or they just liked the cross-cultural aspects of him. But there were part of him that was kind of immoral and part of him that was sort of immature as he was feeling out what he could and couldn't get away with around an American boy, an American young man. And one of the harder parts of our relationships in the community was I was just a modest father. I wasn't living and we weren't living in a huge type of, of home like these two hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollar homes that his friends were. We decided we didn't want to invest in a home like that. We took the reason and the rationale that you can invest all you want in a home, you may not get everything out of it when you leave, and while it's a place that you can create memories, so is just about any place, even a tent you can create memories in. And we see that on TV all the time with Alaskan Wild and all this sort of things. What we were more concerned with is what my son would be learning so we spent a lot of my extra discretionary dollars putting him in skill path seminars or taking him to finish up his GED, and that's a long story. He also made a marvelous connection with a woman named Adele, a black woman named Adele, on the south side of Indianapolis, in the University of Indianapolis, where they had a really good ESL school. And it was better than the one that my spouse was learning in downtown Indianapolis with one of the major university players. But that's not my point. The point of being a man is making sacrifices. And when a man sacrifices for his family, he gives up those toys he wants to buy, like camera equipment and all those sort of professional things, and he literally decides what his money is going to be spent on for his family. 
So there was many days that my son would be walking around in his pocket with money that I earned that was more money than I had in my own pocket. It wasn't that I wasn't earning enough, it's just that you only have so many hours of the week. So if you're getting up early in the morning to take someone all the way to the other side of a, of a, of a city so that they can do their learning, and then you're picking up the next one and taking them to a different place to do learning, like in the middle of the city. And then you're going off to your networking events and doing your best to build your business. And then you're going back to your uh, private classroom and doing the classes that you have already on the books and the clients that are already with you. You only have a certain amount of time in your life. So I guess what I'm saying to you is we have to be willing to do the things that are right for us. And the things that are right for a man are taking care of his family maturing his wife and doing things like that but the things that are wrong for a family are when we choose the wrong man when we choose the wrong spouse when we choose the wrong kin to put our investments in 